So I selected the blackest granite, the most expensive granite in the country, Belfast Black. Oxidation through many millions of years it left about two centimeters of a brown crust. So we first have to remove all that brown. And uh, if one polishes Belfast black, you take it back to prehistoric days when it was still a liquid. It looks as if it is oily. It looks like it's a puddle of some sort. in the rock, look for some directional lines and find a way of somehow resembling the cracks of Drikops Island. So I think we've got six or seven cracks on my rock, suggesting these cracks. Then I put some of these images in pockets in between the cracks. of grinding and polishing we softened everything and we brought out that black luster of the granite Slowly, huh? Beach on, beach on, slow. Lots of research in this area. I had meetings with various um, interested parties, various groups of people who explained the history of the area to me. But the history that intrigued me the most was the history of 2000 years ago, not the history of 200 years or 100 years ago, the history of Drikops Eiland. We went to Drikops Eiland and there were three or four bedrocks bigger than this rock sandstone big black areas of sandstone with thousands of marks on them idioglyphs on the ground. The sense of up, left, right and bottom vanishes when you start walking around or when you sit here and you look. Where's up? Where's down? Where's left? If you turn a little bit, left becomes right, then bottom becomes top. They move around as you move around. I swear it's uncanny the way that thing fits specifically and is related specifically to the cracks around. Although you can spin around and look at it from every direction, but there is a sense of how to place the thing. And that formatting for me here speaks of 
intellect, ideoglyphs, these ideas that are inscribed with these thoughts, really, that were inscribed on this rock. And what do they, what do they represent? Every single thing is far, far more deliberate than a doodle or a, or a sort of a chance effect that was just made. These were done with great attention to pattern, rhythm, to getting the proportion of the thing right, so that each line, if it needs to be repeated, is exactly repeated as if he had studied art all his life and he knows how to do that line and repeat it exactly next to it. I would like to be so bold as to say that I think these few rock beds that we're sitting on here, that they are perhaps the oldest collection of instruments of thought. And because they are such, I think they are a kind of remnant or a leftover of a once upon a time university. There was a collection of, we call them scribes maybe, intellectuals, people with direction, people with focus, people with intellectual uh, acumen, sharpness. Those people who made these things to me are the lecturers, the professors, and the students of 2000 years ago. This is probably the oldest university that we can have evidence of in this country. And for me, it's wonderful to be sitting on a 2000 year old university. A campus, the word campus means field. Campus is Latin. And in the old days, the teachers used to teach under the trees and in the open. And I can see when these people made these things with with a focus and with attention that they would be surrounded by other people wanting to learn from them, wanting to see what is going to come out of this and then do and act upon what was done here. I think they are not superficial, I think they are incredibly intellectual and that's why for me I was drawn to bring a little bit of this. Sometimes it's underwater so I make this big rock. Free State University, where I try and bring homage to these heroes of the past, these professors and, <laughs> and uh, doctors, the doctores. And the writing, what motivated the writing? But this is paying respect to, to today, to you and me. It's from the modern times. It's coming out of the cracks of the, the history of the rock. You and I are only coming out of the cracks now. So I put some nice things there from the 20th century, you see. It's definitely unique and it attracts attention, very much so, because everybody that walks past you is like, what is this thing? Why it's doing here? So um, I think it's good. I think it will get people thinking. Marotodi apula aeta le soba le joeng. Isin ka di foka impaka ka hoa ka peta. There's one in English that says, Anger is a stone cast into the wasp's nest. And it's by Pope Paul VI. The text and the script that we use today seem to sort of come out of the cracks and tell us a little bit about rocks and how rocks are important in shaping people's lives and giving people direction. So those quotes on the rock were well researched from many different cultures and I put them in lots of different languages from South Africa and uh, they are nicely mixed up to represent the reality of modern South Africa as an intellectual country, as a country with a future in its education, its universities, and the way we think and want to develop further from understanding each other. So, what pen will I want? Diani, Tela, Fuma, Etu, Lama, Oman, Kome, Meza, Amad. Oh! Civilization began the first time an angry person cast a word instead of a rock. So, this is about a rock. I think that says something. 
So we put it in English instead. Oh, okay. But it invites certain ritualistic, certain spectacular, certain speech making. You can stand it. It's, it's a, this is the rock. It has arrived. Uh, see you at the rock. Yeah. I am I'm the rock star.